here uh, with NBR Ryan Holmes and uh, on behalf of the Mineral Beach Project. Uh, in working with Hartman, working through our comments, and working through our final land development, um, it was brought up that the original decision for the PRD that was granted uh, in the fall of 19, that the decision was for 104 units. The original plan came in was 116 and it alternated and fluctuated. And what I was coming tonight was to show the two plans, the original one that was part of the decision, which is 104, and show the current plan, which is essentially the exact same with, some, with a few small tweaks in the back end. And we actually were, we have 112 units. So what I'm here tonight is to show you that it's, we're not changing access points, we're not changing anything that you would actually, the naked eye doesn't see those changes, it's just some of the, some of the plan stuff tweaked in the back here, but we now have 112 units on here. And what I'm asking is for the board to recognize that and allow us to change that density of that decision to 112 so that we can proceed with our, our, our final land development process. Let me provide some comment direction for the board. Uh, this development was done as a planned residential development. Right. We had a short format PRD. There's a PRD zoning section in our zoning board that talks about how this is to be approved. Uh, initially, a PRD comes in as an application for conditional use approval. And the preliminary plan is submitted as part of that. We had a hearing, a decision was made. If you look at the PRD zoning ordinance, the next step is for the master plan to be finally approved. And that's where NBR is at this point. Correct. The PRD section says if there is a substantial change from the original plan to the revised master plan, that at the discretion and recommendation of the solicitor engineer, uh, the board can have another public hearing. Typically, what we look at to see if there's been a substantial change is if, if access points have changed, if setback lines have changed, if they're now asking for waivers that they never asked for. Uh, we're looking for changes in a plan uh, in the form of a revision that may impact adjoining properties. I looked at this plan in detail. I talked to Jamie about it and other than the, 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 the units going from 104 to 112, the density is not significantly being changed. The open space is not being reduced. And those are the main concerns you have when you look at a PRD application. And so in my opinion, this does not require a public hearing uh, because there's not a substantial change from the original plan that was submitted as part of the conditional use application and hearing. And this is something the board uh, can take as an agenda item and a motion to approve the revised master plan, which will become the final plan. Now, that takes you through the PRD process. There's still the final site plan right. and other things that NBR is going to have to uh, meet the requirements of the subdivisional land development ordinance. Uh, and and that's, that's for another day. But this is the big hurdle, getting from preliminary approval to final approval when we can been presented with a revised master plan that doesn't have substantial change. Is okay. there any action of the board that you are requesting for this evening or down at the next meeting? What are you? I mean, can you wait to the next meeting? In case anybody has any questions, I mean, I talk a lot about the PRD. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can get your coffee. That should be a definite agenda item for the next Yeah, we just like to keep rolling on our, our land development that density changes, that changes our plan development, obviously right. our final plan. But yeah, we can get plans, I'm happy to leave plans. Yeah. You okay with that, Jay? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think the, uh, the board should have the opportunity to see a copy of that master plan. If the action is to approve the master plan with a lot change, uh, I want you guys to have a chance to look at that. And Ryan, you can just tabulate, clarify, show sure. the, the buffers, the setbacks, the lot areas, so they can see that everything is consistent with that original application and then you can vote with confidence at the next one. And, and just so we know, you gave preliminary approval to their master plan. We're now giving final approval to a revised master plan. 
So that's that's what is going to be on the agenda. Revised master plan, final approval. Okay. Bobby, did you note that for the next meeting? Yeah. I'll take the opportunity to just tell a little bit about the progress that the applicant has made on the final land development plan. They requested a uh, workshop with us uh, this past Monday. They, they their engineers and, and Mr. Klausner came into our office with, uh, I'll call them 75% revisions on the final land development plans. We talked through all 100 comments or so that were left on the table from their previous engineer. And I think everybody's on a good path as far as their engineers, their plan development, our expectations, the orders requirements. And so they're, they're moving in a good direction to have final land development plans in the very near future. Can we get them? 